your original couple of first properties, et cetera, you'd buy in your own name to try and, you know, work through as much tax you can. But then from there, you've got to also think about land tax. You've got to think about other aspects. So buying in a trust that, that can then, you know, you can move either the losses or the gains around within the trust to, you know, at the end, hopefully become out at least even if not ahead a little bit. But, you know, it's all about that playing that game with, um, with your tax as well. So, you know, that's just also the next step. So, you know, at, at originally though, just a nice straight buy and hold property that has a good yield, that has good capital growth that you can move then onto your next property. Mm. No, it's nice. I've, we've got a bit of a uh, situation, um, I don't know what you call it, Jared, like there's the buyer's agent industry is, it's somewhat new. I mean, it's been around for sort of 20 years in Australia, but um, you've come through and you've obviously, you know, very experienced and very extremely educated, um, put it that way. Like what, like to help people to listen to this, like to find a good buyer's agent, in my opinion, like it's very challenging. Like in every industry, there's, I say there's, there's good, there's bad and there's rubbish. I used to use a different word, <laughs> but now I call it rubbish. Um, you know, what are some things that you, like you've, you know, learnt to, I guess, what's your advice on people that are thinking about going down the buyer's agent path and what to look for in a good BA? Yeah, look, I I think depending on, you know, what you're, what you're wanting, like some people are going to want more hand-holding, et cetera, and, and to know the process going forward and probably to also help with education. Um, some might just be happy to go, no, you just do it all and just tell me and just buy it. So depending on how much um, input people would want. But I think the main thing is to, to go in asking a set of questions and if they can't answer those questions, that would be a red flag for me immediately. Um, the person that I would talk to, I'd be asking if they've actually ever purchased property themselves for them, themselves as well. So what kind of buy-in have they got or is it just a job? Um, you know, if it's just a job and they're just wanting the end outcome, then is that also the right thing for the client? Um, there's a lot of people out there who pay a lot of money to be good marketers. <laughs> um, and <laughs> I was trying to think of the right word. Is that, but is that really the kind of, buyer's agent that you want either. Um, if you go into some of these bigger companies, you're not really dealing with the the head person. You'll be dealing with, you know, their fourth, fifth, sixth or 20th person. So do you know who you're going to be in contact with every single time that you ring up? Or is it just a different person bringing something up on the computer and reading notes from it? So how much are they invested in your whole, you know, start to finish um, on your property journey as well? So, you know, I've, I've seen some buyer's agents and it's like, I, cause I actually help sometimes some of the buyer's agents find property, um, because they just either can't do it or, um, they they've got too many in the books. So uh, some of the times I'm hearing, I just need to get this person off my books and I yeah. don't like that. I don't like that kind of attitude. Um, so mm -hmm. that's probably a big no for me, but some people take on too many clients as well and they can't actually service them. Um, or they take on, like they might have four clients in the one area that they're looking for at the one same price. So it's like, well, who are you going to give this property to? But they yeah. don't they don't seem to care. So the ethics, I think, sometimes on the buyer's agent aren't the correct one. Um, and it's looking at why are they in the business? Are they in the business just to make money or are they in the business to help people through their property journey? Well, so I that's the that, difference. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, Lisa. I think that it's – and I'll put my hand up and say that I was this person at the start when I was starting in my business is like I started my business to make money so I didn't have to do my regular job as a plumber and I was just like trying to make money. Obviously, I've got ethics and I was doing the best service that I could. In fact, like providing a far better service than, you know, as we scale, you do lose some serviceability when you're not too, as close to the client. Uh, and I think that most people, like now that you've got these like, marketers out there marketing become a certified buyer's agency agent and you can make x amount of money per month people are like damn i stuff my job i'm gonna do this and i just want to make money and that's what they're in it for mm. um and the ones that i guess there's the ones that survive are the ones that do put the service the best service forward 